Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, where you might be. This is the Wix Online Meeting Triage Session 11.5, November 26th. This is the last one before uh, the final release, the RTM release of Wix 3.8, all that kind of stuff, assuming we don't find anything big, bad, and scary inside here. So I guess we'll just go ahead and get started with the bugs, because that's what we're looking for, is bugs that are big, bad, and scary. Um, which I suppose we should start with uh, three eight untriage then. Sure. Sure. Whoa. There's a lot. I assume these are the ones that just came in these last couple days. All right. Um, I guess we'll just start here, huh? Start at the bottom and go from there. That works. Let's see if any of these stick. Um. Wow. What weird formatting. Anyway, uh, try to convert. Oh, it's because there's dashes, I think, underneath it, and that makes it big. Uh, try to convert that finalized property table. Hmm. So we have a property table. Uh, we're not going to hold 3.8 for this, right? Uh, no. So we should put it in 3x and put it in the right area and hunt this down. Yes? Um. Yeah, I haven't gotten a reply to my request for the actual package. Well, uh, yeah, and it'll sit in 3x until we get a little bit more information, probably. Um, yeah, probably. But yes, I think that's... Yep, all right. Perfect. Moving on. All right. Uh, Wix projects are checked out by Code Analysis and VS 2013. Wow. Okay. This is probably a votive thing, huh? Yeah, I have I have no idea. Um. Well, we're not going to lose any data doing this, although it might be annoying. So I don't think we'd hold three eight for it. Uh, no, no. Right. I'm I'm curious to know the underlying cause. Yeah, obviously this might be one of those MPF things. <laughs> Yet another MPF thing. Yeah, sure, why not? Uh, so this is probably votive, and we can drop it into... Um, 3x? 3x, yeah, and go hunt it down. And Jacob, yeah, I think those are... Oh, what is stop on... I don't know, he's just saying there are no changes when I compare the files, so why are they checked out? So I don't think it stomped on anything. So, I don't know, probably some weird TFS checking files out thing. Oh, actually, yeah, that's a good um, good point. Uh, what's your version control? Yeah, I don't know. There's no discussion about loss of data, so I don't think I'm going to hold the build for this bug. I'm pretty sure people would be screaming if we had really blown something up here. Yeah, um, if there are no changes. It's just checked out. The checkout's annoying because... Well, yeah, know. it's annoying. <laughs> yeah. So. All right. Well, are we going to hold 3.8 for this? No. Okay. So let's go to 3x and, and go hunt down the, the root issue wherever it is. Wix projects rebuild when running. Whoa, a picture. I didn't know we would do that. Um, when running unit tests in Visual Studio 2013. Um, clicking here to run unit tests causes projects to be built. Recently did that. Unit tests. Wix projects are rebuilt running that. So the trick is, uh, and this is the output, and somewhere in here it will say why the project is being rebuilt. Uh, bah, bah, bah. Is there any comments down here? Ah, right. Um, yes, the entire solution to build, whereas 2013 current project never indicate that they're up to date. Well, Wix projects will indicate they're up to date if they're up to date. Um, any changes, without any changes, will show one project seed. Well, that would mean that there's something being opened or something being edited in here. Um, uh, how do I find that? I want to 
find the thing that's out of date. So here's light. Okay. Uh, done building. Right. Project evaluated. Resolve. Lib skipped. Oh, because it's not a library. Oh, the compiler was rerun. Okay. Somewhere in here we're going to find something that says why this is all rerun. Building target candle completely. Target compile and link. Ah, there it is. Input file install Wix proj is newer than output file product Wix OBJ. So the Wix proj is being modified. Well, that's going to cause a rebuild. So, yeah. This is this is expected unless of course the Wix project not being updated is a problem. Well, I'm wondering if this is related to the previous voted bug. Um Oh, Wix rebuild always. <laughs> Good catch, Jacob. Oh, Wix rebuild always. Well, yeah, okay. That's the name of the project. Oh, okay. That's pretty funny. Um, so, yeah, for some reason, the Wix project is out of date all the time, or for whatever reason. Well, that that line there, that's coming from the candle that, pass. That's MS Build. No, no, this is coming from MS oh, Build. Oh, that's MS Build. Okay. Yeah, this is MS Build. Input file is newer than that OBJ file. So it means that the project file was modified sometime after the product Wix OBJ was created. So, yeah, the trick is to go figure out why that's happening. And I don't see anything in here. I don't see anything in here that's saying why this is newer than that one. Um, well, that's the issue to go hunt down. Twenty twelve. So, do we want to go hunt this down in three eight, or are we putting this in three nine? Well, I, see, I, I don't. <laughs> there were no changes in voted for this, so this is a change in, you know, either somehow our targets, which I doubt, or not in three eight. Yeah, it, and it's. Um, man, I don't know. I, uh, my inclination, this is not a, again, this is a, a, an inconvenience to be sure, but if, it, but it, you know, it's not a data loss or anything like that. Um, it's a regression, which is unfortunate. Um, well, it's a change in Visual Studio behavior that we're now exposing this. I mean, technically speaking, if you rebuild this project, it should do this every time. Like whether you use uh, um, the uh, unit test or not. Well, and it should happen once. Right. I mean, this is the issue right here. Like, why is? I mean, this is going to be a problem for all builds, right? Build it, build it again. It shouldn't do anything the second time. Right. Right. Now I know this works because I just did this in China and it worked. So you could build and you could build again and it didn't rebuild anything. It was really fast, which yeah. is really nice because they had a really big project. So I don't know. This is something, you know, who knows? I don't know what's causing this to change. 
Yeah, and I think any fix is going to be inside of uh, votive, if possible. You think it's if, votive? Okay. Well, well, <laughs> if there if a fix is possible, it's going to be in, in votive. Um, I don't know that a fix is possible. I don't know, you know, if the timestamp is actually changing, because that's what, that's why I asked about where the message came from. That's MS Build. Yeah, MS that's MS Build. Just, that's just comparing timestamps on the files. So yep. Yep. the file is newer. If there's a way we can work around it, it's going to be in votive. And, um, you know, oh, look, who do we have working on votive? Um, yeah, it's just not going to happen. Well, the real question is, are we holding 3.8 for it? Well, that's where I was getting to. Uh, no, because we'd have to sit here for, you know, a long time until magic happens to make votive experts help us out. Um, you know, th this change comes from Visual Studio, and I'm not seeing a way to... Yeah, you know, a simple way of, of affecting it. If it happens from, uh, I don't know. Uh, that's the, I don't know what causes it. If there's a way we can fix it, it's going to be in votive. I don't see any other way to, uh, any other place we could fix it, right? Well, yeah, and it, you could get around this probably by removing your Wix um, project from your solution build you know, in the build configuration. Yeah. To not be built when you're building your unit test. So it's not great. It's annoying. Yeah. Unpleasant. Um, yeah, Keith, if you could attach a, a, your test projects, or not attach because we don't have attachments. Um, you know, put it up on SkyDrive or Google Drive or something. Uh, you know, we can take a look. Uh, I do not see this getting fixed in 3.8. Um, maybe we can figure out from a test project, you know, uh, because truth be what we have to look at is what's causing the timestamp to change. Uh -huh. and who's doing it. Now, the problem is, even with something like Procmon, all you're going to see is that Visual Studio. <laughs> which is not going to narrow down whether it's, you know, votive or the test runner or whatever else. Um, so that's going to be a challenge to, uh, to figure out. Um, it's an unfortunate regression, but I just don't see that we'd realistically be able to fix it. I actually expect this is the same thing. Every time you build a solution, I expect this is happening, even in 2012. I don't think it's 2013. I'd be surprised if it's only 2013. I think the difference here is that 2013 builds the uh, whole solution, which means any time you build the whole solution, I expect this to happen, whether you're in 2013 or 2012. Right, so it, it's basically it comes down to when you build the solution, the Wix project gets updated. So the question is, does it go in 3.8 or does it go in 3x? And it sounds like it goes in 3x. Yeah, unfortunately. All right. That solves that one for now. VS 2013 registration hangs installation. Oh, well, that's not helpful. And who knows, right? Yes, it can. Visual Studio registration could take a really long time, sometimes. On the order of 10 minutes. Yeah, it can be. It's really bad. I wish they'd remove that requirement. Well, they um, did once. Yeah, they did in Visual Studio 2020, and they brought it back. So um, uh, this isn't happening to everybody, clearly, so I vote 3x, and maybe we'll eventually hunt down something special. But I don't know that we can do anything differently. We have to call devm slash setup, and there's only one way to do that. Well, the the workaround is, for some reason, that I don't think really has anything to do with it. 
is to run it via client exec. Um, what? Wow. Why yeah. is that? That that's weird. I'm not intimately familiar with how DevM setup is implemented, but I cannot for the life of me imagine a reason that you know running it in a hidden window is going to make a difference. Well, it's, it's yeah, it's a different create process, I guess. I don't know. That's kind of weird. Um, Bruce, yes, we could put up a message that's saying this takes a long time. We'd have to go change the BA to go handle that. I mean, it could do it totally. There's already a message saying doing Visual Studio registration or whatever. Not very pretty, but whatever. So uh, 3x, it's 3.7 and 3.8, so. And my own product, wow. Yeah, that's my concern. Um, but again, without understanding a root cause here and not being able to reproduce it locally. Well, and he has a workaround if that really works it. Um, the QT exec, and yeah. I guess we could look at doing that in the future, but what would it do? It, I don't know what that would do. Yeah, I don't know. All right. Well, so, three X. Demo center shouldn't throw any UI, so I'm not. Yeah, it shouldn't. Not, so. not clear. But yeah, three X, I think. All right. Firewall port list range not possible. Yes, this is a feature request. Um, it is a feature request. The, uh, but it should be a string, really? No. Probably not, right? No. The the. Uh, again, this is a general problem or issue with the design of the firewall custom action. It was all designed around the functionality that we had in XP. Yep. And the. I'm pretty sure the port range was something that was added with the Vista firewall. Right. Cool. Feature. Can go yep. 3x. Totally added it. Yep. Awesome. Feature. Unicode support to... There's two bugs on this. Yeah, we're discussing yes. this. There's another bug. This is not Wix toolset. Whatever. Um, yeah, and so we have a discussion on this, and yeah, creating a Unicode version of this seems reasonable for the cases where you want the format string to be Unicode, although certainly not the default. And yeah, um, I don't. I'm, actually, I'm curious though. How do you, do you think the Unicodeness of the function? Sorry, let me back up. The, the problem that we discussed in the or others discussed in the thread was that the ls or cap s format string didn't work. No, it works. It just, it because we're using the ANSI version of it, because we're using an ANSI format string, it yep. default it uses the default code page, which can end up swallowing some characters when you end up taking Unicode into that. Interesting. Particularly Cyrillic is a favorite thing. Um, OK, well, because uh, I know the logs are actually Unicode. Uh, yes. So yeah, it, it will work if we allow if we use the W functions instead of the A functions and allows you to pass a Unicode formatter and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, I mean, it, it's a reasonable request for someone that wants to do that to their log file. I just don't want to make it the default. Um, oh, agreed. Well, our executables will get much bigger because we have so many strings everywhere. Plus so, they're broken. I, I don't know. I I don't want to make this the default for forex. I don't want to make this the default. I I don't want to make this the default. Most of you, the identifiers that we write and things like that are just you know ANSI stuff from MSI. So they you know they're all A through Z, capital lowercase and zero through nine, and an underscore and a dot. So <laughs> we don't need much more than that. But um, having this function for other people to use, I think is totally reasonable. And it could go in 3x. It could go in 3.9 if someone wants to go write it. Um, do we want to keep this one? There's, there's two bugs on this. Which one do we want to keep? This one or the other one? Let's keep this one. Okay. More, I, more detail. All right. Well, we're not going to take it in 3.8, that's pretty sure, right? No. No, it's a nice feature, but not... Uh... 
Well, unless Keith wants to do this in 3.9, then we could put it in 3.9 right now um, and assign unless it to him and go that because he happens to be hanging out on a thread. All right, fine. So let's give it to him for 3.9, and I think it's a completely reasonable thing to do in 3.9. Okay. I don't like A and W because it implies the automatic switching thing. I don't think. I don't know. The other dutal things actually spell out ANSI when they're and, yes they're not. So it's using like yeah. a Unicode. Uh, let's not let, let's not design it here. Let's go back to the mailing list and decide what we want to call it. But we could totally call three night. It can be called Foo until we come up with a name. Yes. Um, all right. Since we're doing custom stuff. Uh, Robert sent a number of issues to be looked at. Um, yes. Here was one of them, the whole fact thing. Um, yeah, we should go find the fact and link to it correctly. I don't know where it went. Um, the click-through stuff, I don't know. I think that's dead, but maybe we'll just delete it. Um, so we should, yeah, so we should take this uh three nine uh three x and see if he'll take it yeah uh three x is fine All i right. think we should figure out i mean in three nine we can um okay okay so in three nine we can change the url in the message yeah uh, i'm gonna have to go find this fact page why don't you give this to me in three nine because i'm gonna have to go back to the archives and find out where this page went must have got okay. lost in the migration, and I have all the archive data. It'll be much easier for me to do it than try to get on source work to somebody else. All right, so give me that. I'll do it in 3.9. And we'll get the correct URL up there. Invalid and outdated links to the manual. Yeah, we should fix these. Yeah, 3.7, 3.8 SDKs. I, don't, I haven't tried on using the SDK in a long time. Um, yeah, we should fix this. Well, a lot of the, a lot of the links that we use that don't redirect use that BS 8.5 version number. Ugh. I think that's, yeah, like a weird placeholder for maybe the Win 7 SDK. Yeah, uh, I don't know. We should just stop linking to MSDN because they keep breaking their links all the time. No, I don't know what to do. Um, yeah, we should fix these. So I guess we'll open it, and he wants to try to pull it in 3.9. We can do that. Yes? Uh, yes. And and we should have a discussion on Wix devs to figure out what the right SDK is at this point. Right now, it's install Visual Studio. I haven't tried. Building you know, Wix, right? Yeah, for building Wix, which I assume what this is. That's what this is all oh, about. Oh, I see. Okay. This is about building Wix. Um, so yeah. Um, on to these bugs. These are the other bugs he opened. Oh, he didn't assign to himself, and they're open. All of these bugs are being fixed. Let's put all these in 3.9. They're assigned to him. I think he's going to get it done in 3.9. Because he sent a fix already for all of these. Oh, that's right. I remember that. So, 4182, 4089, 4131, 3924, 4099, 4111. Yes, I think we'll just take all those in 3x because I think he's going to get a fix, even if this isn't quite the right fix that he submitted for. I haven't looked at it yet, but if that's it, then yeah, we'll get close. So. Okay. Cool. That'll be nice. It's kind of a one sweep, kill all these bugs kind of thing. So. Yeah. All right. On to un. No, not 3x untriaged. All untriaged. Oh, here's that duplicate. Does not support Unicode. Um, I think we can just make this one go away as a dupe of the other one. Yes. I am software developer. I can fix. Um, just need to figure out what to name it. Um, yes. OA reference kind property throws com exception in Visual Studio for Votive. Uh, sure. I'm sure it does. 
yeah, we should fix that in votive, whatever that means. Name, works column plus extension. Another VS extension that relies to that. Okay, fine. So we have to go either get a new MPF that handles that or whatever it is. So, yeah, 3x. 3x. I think it sounds like a great fix. These move deutal pull request sent. Yeah, so I think we'll take this, right? Open. We've been talking about this for a while. Yes. Yes. API for detecting bundles. Yeah, this too. We've been talking about this too. So, open. Bundle self update. We've been talking about this too. All in 3.9. Oh, look. This looks so pretty. I love the little markdown formatting. Um, I don't know why this is in here. Oh, bundle get. Okay, yes. So, yeah, this is open too. Cool. Cool. All right. Ball extension doesn't work with bundles anymore. I probably broke this in four. Um, you had to downgrade to three eight. Yeah, dude, four is going to be all kinds of broken for quite a while. Um, yeah, this is probably me. You can assign this to me in four, okay. and we should open it. I'm sure I did something. I broke it. Deprecate switches. I think we agree that we should do this. It's already assigned to me. So yeah, how about open? Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Cause this will I'll clean that out. Fail to create pyro patch too long. Open to untriage. Steps to reproduce. I tested environment. Works cool. So there's a pull request for this, right? Yes. All right. So yes, open. I don't know if it needs to go back to untriage if there's a pull request. It can stay. If it was open, it can stay open. Um, but it's nice to have a conversation with the person that opened the bug. So that's all good. All right. I don't think we need to retriage that. Um, rebuild doesn't work. Rebuild seems to be broken again. Reports all update doesn't rebuild them. Clean build works. The problem is having a target called clean. Well, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> I think I remember Bruce replied to the thread in which does. I think. This is a should Wix avoid such generic targets or should I? You should. This is Wix common targets that we're modeling after. So we are uh, your build system. We are your we are the foundation for your build system. So ours is the the root one. So yeah, that's that. Not Wix common targets. Microsoft common targets. Yeah. So I mean, in of course in Wix three eight in Wix three x we what we have is basically a duplication of Microsoft common targets in Wix targets. So that's and in Wix four, I removed all that duplication, and now we just use Wix common targets. In either case, clean target comes from your base. We are your base, just like clean comes from the CS proj. And if you override our clean, that's allowed by MS Build, and you get whatever funky behaviors you get. Uh, Jacob has asked if we have, you know, our targets documented. There are hundreds of targets in the common targets. Microsoft doesn't document them either, so uh, I don't know that we're going to go through them. But you know, it's the standard ones: build, clean. Oh gosh, there's so many. <laughs> there are so many. There's there's probably 200 in there. So no, we don't document them. I, I, I guess someone could go through if they wanted to go document them, but it's a very large task. It's actually interesting though, because there are a number of. Um, no, you don't want to. You don't want to auto grep all of them because a bunch of them are internal targets too that aren't intended to be talked about. And MS Bill doesn't have this public versus private kind of concept, so. That's the whole leading underscore thing. Sort of, except they're not even consistent with that either. So. Oh, you're kidding. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not that simple. Uh, so it's just challenging but this behavior is consistent with um, like C sharp projects and, and C++ plus plus targets and all that kind of stuff we actually use the same names that C sharp and C++ plus use so if you use those targets it's, it's basically MS build is it's it's the targets that they say you should have or whatever the standard targets and that's what we do it's not necessarily well documented yeah core clean is hidden inside clean 
for C++, Bruce. So clean is the main one, and core clean is hidden inside. And C++ does all kinds of crazy stuff in their targets, because they also have the compile link model, which the Microsoft Common Targets didn't do a great job, because they're like, oh, we're going to be for managed code, so we'll just have single-pass builds, and that'll be easy. Anyway, I get frustrated with the short-sightedness of some of those decisions. But anyway, um, build clean are the things. It's not even compile isn't exposed as something you're supposed to do, although they do have before compile and after compile and before build and after build. Um, Visual Studio adds, I forget what it is, before link, I think they have. Anyway, anyway, there are many entry points all over the place. If you want to see tons and tons of targets, look at C++ targets. They get crazy to try to read. All right, carrying on. Mistake in service dependency element. This is an old bug. All right, we're back into ancient history. The docs for service dependency say, should be one of the following. I tried to do number two. Oh yeah, I remember this one. Uh, this must be your bug. I don't want to go that far. Oh, okay. The no, the the documentation says that certain things work and they don't. They don't. Okay. Cool. We should fix this. Awesome. That's easy. I, I just thought, you know, Ryder was smoking that day. That sounds like, you know, something that was hit close to home or something. No, no, no. no. Um, using heat multiple nice. times against the same directory structure will have all kinds of problems. I don't even know. I guess we could keep this, but I don't know how you go what the fix is for this. It'd be nice if I could merge these heat results and get something like that. Well, yeah. that works if you use the all the calculated stuff, right? No, because you'll get the directory tree to find again. Oh, that's right. So you end up with duplicates of folder one, or my subfolder will be duplicated and crash into each other and stuff like that. So right. anyway. It might work with an honest ID work that I'm doing in Wix 4, but that would be Wix 4. Um, I don't know. Heat needs a lot of attention. This is not one of the lesser problems it has. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, harvest a two-child. There's workarounds to this. Don't harvest them in multiple passes. There's a, there's a few different ways. Of, there's a couple ways of doing this. Um, so I don't. Do we want to keep it or do we want to kill it? I mean, I, I yeah. This is not spend it. I, I'm not terribly interested in. Yeah, that's the problem. Well, yeah. Well, no. I mean, it's just don't don't do that. Don't do it in two passes. All right. Uh, let's 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 push it to suspended and call it good. All yeah. right. And, you know, hey, if someone wants to do it, they could do it. No problem with that. Native image given, give any way to apply feature not only for a file, but for file scope harvested from assembly reference. For files? I don't understand. No this, I don't know what this means. I think, what, you want to apply native, oh, you want to apply native image to all of the harvested files? That's what I'm going to guess it means. Oh, not just for a file, but for all the files. And, and the answer to this is to use a template <laughs> and apply the native image to all of your files. And he, I, this is, no, this is, yeah, harvested and all that kind of stuff. Use a template. That'll do it. At least that's what Heat has today. Agreed? Absolutely. All right. Until someone comes another way, that's the way to do that. Absolute paths added in references. Wait, didn't we talk about this? Oh. Okay. So add a reference to that. Um, so this is something about adding references. Do we really add full hard-coded paths to the extensions? I guess both. Uh, 
That could be about it. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I, I agree. Hard-coded paths are not ideal. I thought it added it relative to, like, Wix or something. I thought it would just use the file name. Oh, right. It does just use the file name. Does When they're in that... Oh. But there's the hint path. Is hint path what it's about? No, oh, yeah, that's the complaint. Oh, the hint path. Okay, fine. Fine. I, sure. Make votive smarter. I'm, yeah, I agree. It's kind of lame. Full path's not going to work out so well. So, yes, we could take that in three X. What are hint paths? No, oh, never mind. <sighs> XML config doesn't work with IS six. Web config from scratch produces a single line with single line. Oh, jeepers. IS6 can't handle a single line XML file? Really? What are they doing? Custom parsing? Uh, whatever. Uh, I don't care, but yeah, I guess. Um. Really? I'm really surprised they can't handle a single line thing. This is an IS bug, right? Sounds like it. All right. I say we go file this on IS bug. Good call, Jacob. We should go. They can go take it up with IS and get it fixed. Um, we could add a feature to format XML config. I think there's actually a bug out there somewhere saying it'd be nice if XML config could format somehow. Not that I know how to get white space in there, but that's a different... Do, do like a pretty print after... Yeah, or something. But, yeah, pretty print the elements you add or something. So, anyway, let's go ahead and say this is IS6 bug and they can come back if they want a pretty print thing. Although I think we do have a bug open on that. Okay. Bugs and set up XE. Well, that's easy. This is fixed. Or gone. Resolved. Yes, resolved. Text files text files. What a beautiful text. Support, modify, flat text files. I agree we should do that. Don't we have another bug on this? I'm pretty sure we have another bug on this. I haven't memorized them all. Huh? I haven't memorized all the bugs. No, but I'm pretty sure we had this. Anyway, this is a good feature. Wow. All right. So, text files. I Yeah, we should do this. We should dupe this to the other bug if it's out there. Agreed? But it's a reasonable thing to do in 3X if someone wanted to do it. I think it would be nice. Agreed? Uh, yeah, sorry. I'm, you're, you're getting ahead of me. Uh, yes, I agree. All right. Primary key validation rule missed. Custom tables missing column element primary key set to yes. One column should be marked primary key. However, if you author a non-primary key followed by a primary key, oh, that's not allowed. Okay. Yeah, fair enough, because IDE import things are bad. So, yeah, we could do this in 3x. And, yeah, that would be a good, yeah, we should fix that. One of many rules. All of your primary keys must be first in the table. EA to extract setup helper files. Oh, to a temporary folder during installation. Afterwards, can use it again for deleting that temporary. Use it again for deleting. We could do that, I guess. Setup files. How do you do this securely? Yeah, that's the problem. You end up with... Because if you use these things in deferred, you'd have to put them in a deferred, I guess you could put them in the I guess you put them in the elevated temp folder well, I'm, I'm not sure how you use it, but extract files, to, I guess I guess you could have like a big data file or something well, this this is the whole, the, yeah, the install shield support files thing <clears throat> where you want you know, basically you have a full app and you need all of its dependencies to get extracted somewhere so you can use them. Okay. I, I guess we'll have to talk about security of this when it comes up, but I guess you could do that. This is the oh, this is the whole people, people trying to shove binary stuff in their MSI and pull it out at install time or whatever, right? Yep. 
Yeah. Mm. I guess. Heat project task rejects dynamically created item groups. I would believe that. Cool. Yeah. One of many things Heat Project does. That could be done in 3.9 or 3x. 3.9 if someone wanted to. Agreed? Uh, I have no idea. So, sure. I'm pretty sure. Well, yeah. Probably. I'll look a look at it in 3x. I don't think it would be breaking to do that. PDB is not generated as part of output as XML specified. True. Yeah, and the way so. We, yeah, true. Because this hasn't done the file. What do they want? For each culture, we build in Wix OBJ. A oh, Wix OBJ. Oh, Wix out. After we compile Wix MST on neutral, that. You can't. This doesn't work. Because it needs the files. Uh, this is, yeah, no. I don't think this works. What do they want? They want to be able to build a patch without having the files involved. Oh, localized installer. Yeah, but you're going to miss all the files doing this. I don't think this works. Could this work? It could work for the UI. For UI. It would only work for the UI, but not if you had any localized files. That's how... Remember, this is the um, undocumented, mostly kind of sort of works thing where you embed... Oh. Um, yeah, but you don't need a PDB for that. Why do you need a PDB? Oh, actually, no, you're wrong. I, I'm sorry. The second paragraph does not contain Euler.RTF. Well, because, yeah, uh, it's a file. Right. Um, yeah. So, well, yeah, PDBs are, PDBs are not going to be generated as output as XML, So, but you don't need the Wix PDB to do the torch thing. So, oh, I see. They're... Uh, <laughs> this should be neutral wicks out to this wicks out to get that. Yeah, that I don't think this is going to work out for you in the end. Yeah, no. Uh, well, this bug is by design. Getting the PDB isn't necessary. What they want is a different feature here, and I don't. We certainly don't close all this yet. Might be interesting, but this isn't. This isn't. This is the least of the problems, I think to get that feature implemented. So anyway, this is by design, and they want something else. Because um, a PDB is a final output. It has all the, it's supposed to have all the final information in it. A Wix out is an intermediate, and it does not get a PDB. That's basically yeah, what comes out. Yeah, I agree. I guess I'm... The, sorry, I'm not getting this. Is the, this appears to me to be an optimization. It is an optimization. To, they're trying to avoid building the final outputs for which their, makes their total sense. Yep, yeah, makes total sense. And so, but to do that, we're gonna have to do something else. Like, we're gonna have to know which files are part of the log files, basically which ones are different, and so on and so forth. I mean, like you have to go figure out that you need the EULA RTF, but not, you know, something else. And you know you have to localize these localization variables, but not, you know, not these other binder variables. And so, I mean, there's a lot that has to get kind of sorted out there. So. Um, yeah, this is so. This is this is correct. We do not generate PDB for output as XML. That's correct. Yeah. And there's a feature request in here that is not what this is saying. Because even if right, we generate right, the right. PDB for them, it would not have the file information, which would not solve this problem. So, yeah, Let's, this bug is that's correct. We this doesn't make any sense. And there's a different feature in here. If they they could try to follow that, but I'm not even sure how to design that right now. Cool. So I would resolve this as 
expected or by design or whatever we're doing for that. Yep. Can't open projects with wildcards. Um. Motive. Sure. Look at that. The error message is even awesome. This project uses wildcards and item specification. Wildcards in this project type are not currently supported. So, yeah, that's true. Good. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> there you go. Someone should go implement that. If you want this different, you should go do the feature. So, yes, true. We could take that in 3x if someone wanted to implement it. Yes. Great. All yep. right. Pre-process variables names before adding it. This is to have preprocessor names inside preprocessor names. Didn't we have a bug on this already? This yeah, is terrifying. Absolutely. No. <laughs> and I think I had that reaction before. No, no. No. Inside loops and no. Loops. There's your problem. Yeah, no. No. Ugh. No. So I don't know how we resolve that. Won't well, fix. Yeah. Permissions EX, yeah, this would be nice. No inheritable permissions for edge keys. It'd be nice if we got to a place where the perfect, we got the perfect per lockdown. I, I, yeah. <sighs> yeah, our permissions do inheritance or don't do inheritance and MSIs do inheritance, but sometimes you want to mix and match and there's no way to control that. So yeah, this is a reasonable feature. It could be done in 3X. Agreed. Targets filed to include a version property. Very much like the targets would include a property group which defines the version of Wix associated with. Oh, the version of Wix? Yeah. Oh, Jacob thinks the wildcard bug in Votive may have already gotten fixed. But in that example, oh, yeah, but we don't open that in, yeah, that's from the build, Jacob, but try opening that in Votive and see if it works. MS Build will handle the, the wildcards fine, but try to open the that in Votive or create a project that you know does start.wxs to pull things in. I expect Votive will say, I can't do that. It might also not care about the none item group. That's true. It might not care about the none item group. All right, target files. Uh, I suppose we could do that. Do we not do this already? Not a, not inside a target. I mean, I, we, I suppose we could just plug in the build number. Um, no, not easily. Um. Oh, yeah. Actually, that would kind of suck, wouldn't it? You get the whole problem of the build up, up the build updating a file under source control. Well, this should be fine if we just did major minor, right? For them. That's true. So, yeah, we could do that. So I want to do that. Put it in 3x. Seems, I don't know, reasonable. Um, burn, add locale and architecture to built in variables. Uh, system locale. I guess we could do that. Locale? architecture. Eh. You know, it's probably like MSI user language or something like that is probably what we're missing. So. Yeah, I'm wondering. Yeah, we might already have one of these. So, anyway. Yeah. I think that's fine. All right. So I'm going to refresh. 2742. What do we have? 10 minutes? All right. 274... Wait, where'd it go? Okay, I already did that one. Wow, you got to that one already? All right, cool. Heat incorrectly harvests web project binaries. Yes, it does. I've had people complain about this for a while. So, yes, this could be done in 3X if someone wanted to go about doing it. All right. Um, service control. Conflicting actions should be detected. What? The following code... Conflicting action should be detected. Remove and start on install. Remove and start on both. Stop and start on install. Really? Start and stop on both? Why is stop and start on both problem? 
remove and stop on uninstalled. Why is that a problem? I don't know. Remove and start on install. Maybe that doesn't make sense. Um, sure. I mean, remove, remove something. Is this could well? Yeah, this is service control, right? Yeah. So that works. That works for external for foreign services. So you're yes, saying yeah. I'm replacing. Re remove and start. Well, starting on install is normal. That's normal, but remove and start. Sure. Well, I mean, sorry, if you're replacing some other... Oh, your service install is adding it. You're removing something else. Right. Or, yeah. hell, actually, even if you're removing your own... Well, no, that would be weird. That would be weird. But remove services happens way early. Mm-hmm. So you could remove someone else's, mm -hmm. start yours after it's been installed. Yeah, I don't think this bug is right. I, I, I mean, they might not sound like they're, it's they're not kind common. Of, no, probably not common, but that seems. I would, yeah, I'd hesitate preventing somebody from doing that. Because, yeah, we're just mapping onto what MSI allows anyway. Yeah, but, you know, we should stop you from doing dumb things, but... Well, dumb, yeah. but illegal. Yeah, well, sorry. <laughs> there are things that the tables allow you to do that are not allowable, so... I don't know, We, I guess you could... I mean, does MSI say anything about this? Um, service control table... Um, it doesn't say, I don't, maybe it has things. Yeah, no, it doesn't talk about any limitations. It doesn't seem to talk about any limitations. So, yeah, I don't know. Seems, yeah, I, I think this bug is wrong. So, no, that's not right. Oh, Wix projects don't allow TT. Um... Yeah, we've, there's another bug open on this. I swear we've seen this at least once before. Or possibly. Yes, so anyway. Yeah, could be done in 3.9 if someone wanted to go do all that. Maybe you could consider implementing this option. Maybe you could consider implementing this option. So yeah. Burn should expand environment variables in the path attribute. Burn should expand the variable in the path attribute before performing a file or directory search. Really? I suppose we could. Although, don't you usually do square bracket something? Square bracket percent to get an environment variable expanded? Am I remembering that correctly? Does uh, Burn support that syntax? Sorry. We're just, I'm missing something. Um, the ability to have um, variables expanded. A big black screen. Um, yeah, maybe not. Yeah, I suppose we could allow, we could support the square bracket percent syntax. That's what this is about in burn, right? Because MSI has that syntax, right? Square bracket percent environment variable, and it'll turn right. into so the value. We, we already support formatting in that, in the path. I should think uh, so. <laughs> but, but burn doesn't support the bracket percent syntax. Probably not. Okay. Anyway. Yeah, that's yeah, that's reasonable. Yeah, I don't see it in here. So yeah, that's a reasonable feature request. I would add that comment that we should we could add support for the square bracket percent syntax. Good call. All right. Wix UI dialog sets have high horizontal lines that are too short. The picture. 
I have lines that are just a little too short. Okay. Kind of, sort of. It's just a little too short. It bothers people, apparently. Well, yeah. apparently it does. Cool. We could fix that in 3.9. <laughs> by design to bother them. That'd be hilarious. Um, component gradular granular patches. Yes, it is. Yes, the whole fragment is placed in a patch, which makes it annoying to put every component in a thing. Yes, this would be a cool feature if you could figure out how to do it perfectly. Yeah, we've talked about this since uh, if, so you cool. use the, if you use the stuff that Peter added for patching from admin images, you actually get component granular patching. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I agree with this feature. It'd be great if we could get this feature to be right. So, so yeah, that could be done in, I think, 3x. I think it could be done in a non-breaking change way. But Maybe. We'd actually have to figure out, I mean, it would oh. have to be opt-in. Yeah, it has to be opt-in. Maybe we put it in 4x. Yeah, I, I think we kind of have to do I that. I think we put that in 4x. That's that's a bit scarier. We need more time to bake that. Yep. Anyway, yeah, that would be awesome. So I'm sure how to do that perfectly. So it always worked. Right. Verify that there is an error. The password attribute is set. Okay. There's an error, the oh. password actually is set, but the account is not. Can we specify what account following our source code are the source code? Password, I see. So service install blank name is, blank username is a uh, local system. Can local system have a password? Probably not. So. so that's probably true, right? That makes sense. All right. 3x. Agreed. User account cannot be specified with the serve serve. Uh, user account cannot be specified. Service type is not an own process. Um, so if you're a shared process. In a share process, so you can't specify in a share process the account you're running under? Probably not, because you have to run in the share process. Right. All right. I don't know. Fair enough. I don't know how you use shared process. Um, Either. Like, how do you get that set up? How do you specify the shared process? Mm, dig around in here. Share. Win32 shares a process. Well, interesting. Or done per user account services were run under. Yeah. I don't know that that's true. Uh, okay. If the type is own process, that's the account. If the account built-in username, local system type of... Oh, the local system account must be used if the type service is share process. Oh, all right. So you need to leave it blank. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. Must be used if the type is share process. So if it's shared, it must be local system, which means the account must be that. Yeah, that's true. Cool. That's another error that we could go implement. Okay. Uh, last one, I think. SQL database user is a foreign key, but the extension allows formatted text, which fails ICE 3. Okay. Isn't there a validation that can say that this is a formatted key? I think there's one place where you can do that. Interesting. 
It's files ace three if you use formatted text for that. Yeah, no, it's a bug. We should take it. We can put it in three X. I expect it to. If it can be fixed, it'll be fixed doing that. I thought there was a way of doing that. Okay, because otherwise it's a breaking change or semi-breaking change because we'd have to change the schema of the table. Oh. Should we just put it in 4X and call it good? I'm okay with that, and yeah. I opened the problem, so. Oh, yeah, let's put it in 4X. Just in case we do that, we don't have to think about it. Oh, this one's easy. Installer. Not aligned for multiple versions. That's correct. 3x does not go side by side. So this is fantastic. We could try for 4.0. Um, are we going to do 4.0 side by side? I assume we. Sh I suppose we should. We don't know if we had this problem with 2.0 and 3.0 because Votic was so bad back in 2.0. Um, thoughts? What did, what did we do with that? I don't remember. It was so long ago. Um. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, I think. Well, we need to. Are we going to support this? Regood everything. Should. Although right. the, the problem we're going to run into is what I point out in this bug, which is you're going to you'd have to regood everything, all the projects, all the all the all the votive stuff. Yeah, I know. Uh, and and make sure that they don't interact violently or which I think I put in this bug also is, or we have to, like, figure out, uh, oh, no, no, Votive 3X is installed in 2010, so we can't install Votive 4X there. Um, oh, how do you do that? Uh, you know, stuff like that. Um, we just have to decide, are we doing side-by-side -side for 4X and 3X? I think that's completely fair that we do that. What happens if you have both inside Visual Studio? What does a project get? How do we pick the right project to? That, I I don't think there's a way around that. I think you have to block that case. You can't have three X and four X inside Visual Studio at the same time. Inside the same version of Visual Studio. Well, then what good is side by side? You can have one for VS twenty ten and one for twenty twelve. Or whatever. So, oh. so, yeah, so the, the use case people have talked about is, oh, I have people on my team using, using you know, Wix 3.5 in their VS 2010 projects, and they can't also work in VS 2012 on, you know, 3.7. It's weird, you know, because I don't think you end up converting versions of Visual Studio on quite the same timeline as you might convert versions of Wix, but there, that's a simple use case we could support just by blocking multiple versions of Votive going into the same version of Visual Studio. We, we're not going to support every it's fully side-by-side. -side. I don't think that's possible, but... Yeah, so Jacob brings up the whole ability to have a tools version, but I'm not sure. I guess votive, both votives would be loaded, and then it would pick the right one based off of the tools version. I'm not sure how you do that. This is all votive I work. I don't think that works. I think because you can't do that with CS proj, right? You can't exactly. I mean, you, There's you, one C sharp project system, and it knows how to use multiple versions of the tools. Yeah, that's to what it thing. does. We have to do the same thing. Yeah, it's not to say it's not possible. So you could have you could have a 4.0 votive that knows how to run the 3x tools. Correct. That's right. the way. So it has to be the newest votive that would understand the older tools. Yeah. Yeah. Which you know, not unreasonable, but it's not a tiny amount of work. And yes, we need people who know how, you know, it's it's quite a bit of Visual Studio accessibility work. It's not even like, you know, oh, just, you know, uh, Wix tooling work. It's, you, uh, you're going to be deep inside Visual Studio on that side. Yeah, I think the tooling work is easier. Yeah. Yeah, Keith, the whole, you're right, in Visual Studio 23, you have to show us 12.0, but you're still, even if you're building... 
um, a 11.0 CS proj, then the CS proj you're using the 12.0 CS proj to build against the old MS builds or whatever and things like that. So that's what this votive would have to be. I guess we put it in 4x um, and see if someone yeah. wants to pick it up. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not going to put in 3x. That doesn't make any sense. Well, except, except, uh, just like with Visual Studio, where they share project versions, sometimes you you got to go back and go, ah, crap, we missed something. So, to pull this off might require work in 3.x. Fine, but uh, fine. fine. But yeah, the majority has to be in. Yeah, okay, I thought this was going to be an easy bug. I was wrong. So anyway, I say we put it 4x, and we'll see if anybody wants to pick up this thing. Non-trivial amount of work. That works for me. All right. So where did we get to then? Um, 2656. 2656. Hey, we're under 400. Yep. 2656. All right. One, two, three, four. Four more. Three, four. Oh, I forgot to do the counts at the beginning. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, well, I'll get it next week because I don't think we're going to have a status meeting on Thursday. Instead, we're going to sit here. Hopefully, people try to install the build that came out last night, make sure things look good. If so, then we'll release on uh, American Turkey Day, and um, we will have a big hip hip hooray probably the week after because I'm going to be out of, out of the state by Thursday, so I will not be available to do most of this stuff. Um, so, cool. Wow, 388. That's a pretty good clip. We started, what did we start at? 400 something at the beginning? I guess I'll have to go back and look at the video. Um, 400 yeah. something, right? 420? Yeah. I think we did, we got through, what, screen and a half almost? Yeah, screen and a half. So that's plus a whole bunch of other bugs that I'm not sure were on the screen. Um,. So yeah, cool. 388. Are we down to one page of this? No, we still have multiple pages here. 16. Oh, we're, well, we're down one more page there. So I look forward to this. Yeah, Jacob betting 42. Um, I, I look forward to like when this is a single page and then we know how many we have left rather than this. Oh my gosh, there's more coming down the pike. <laughs> so, um, but we have we have to get through quite a few I think before that happens, right? Yep. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five times 25, so 125, I guess, to get there. All right, well, there we go. That was a good round. Looks like 3.8 untriaged is all good. 3.8 open. Oh, we have a 3.8 open. How many of these are sticking around? Oh. Oh, sorry. That Well, 4.195 should not be open in 3.8. Okay. Should have been 3x. Um, the other three I can resolve since you uh, did the merge and the build. So okay. I'll do that. That leaves us the bottom two. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know what to do about these. Uh, 4180, the. I don't consider it likely that we're going to get the, the link. Um, So we're kind of blocked on that. This will, I guess, roll over into 3.9. Um, on the icons, uh, you're going to check into the... Yeah, we need the assignment call. agreement. We need the assignment, assignment agreement. agreement again. I think we have the assignment agreement, according to a comment in the bug. Um, now I'm just wondering whether we have the right no, version. we don't. Okay. Um, Blair actually pulled the things out into a pull request, which is handy um, if we're good to go by you know, Thursday or Wednesday night or whatever. Yeah, Wednesday night, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, to be honest, both of these things are nice to have so that we can roll over into 3.9. Um, fair enough. Do you want to ping that guy again and let him know that while he thinks he has an assignment, he didn't? Uh, is there anything he can do except wait for Outer Curve to send the new one? He should have already sent it to them. Everybody should have got stuff by now. Okay. I got mine, but I wasn't sure how long 
or if they were doing whole projects at a time or what. Yeah. No, they're, but as far as I know, they, they got them all out. Okay. Um, okay, I'll ping. Uh, yeah, at this point, I, I don't know that I'd even take one. You're not sure you'd take the six? I, 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 would, take the, I would take the icons, sure. I would take the... I take both of them if. Yeah, because one of them is just a URL, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I would take both of them, but yeah, you know, time is running short, so I won't cry if we don't. Okay. All right. So this list should be down to two features. Yes. Okay. And it will be shortly. Yes. All right. Well, that's that's reasonable. And then untriaged is 387. What, did we just get one? Oh, no, sorry. This is going down to actually being fixed. Right, right, right. So, cool. All right. Well, hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day or tomorrow or whatever you're into already. And uh, we will see you next time. This has been triage number 11.5. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.